Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the HCS NA Regionals. We are live from Anaheim, California, and it's Championship Sunday. We just saw our winners' finals before the break, and Cloud9, they haven't missed a beat here. Absolutely insane, insane stuff from this team. And look, they're playing better against the best teams in the world. You guys need to be very, very scared heading into this Grand Finals because they made Optic Gaming look like an easy, easy team here. Optic have some ways to go if they want to rematch Cloud9. But honestly, I believe in them. I believe that they can sort themselves out, get a little bit more flexible with their adaptation to Cloud9 and really give it to them when it comes to that Grand Final. So hopefully they can make it the distance. But Hopefully. we do have an elimination match behind us right now set up. We've got E United versus Sentinels. This is going to be a huge match. We've seen this rematch many, many times. This is a little bit of a rivalry here. I think Sentinels honestly got on the bad side of a lot of our teams. We have a lot of rivalries with Sentinels, but United, I think, hits a little bit different. They don't scrim each other for a start. So coming into this one, I think both teams are one are going to uh, take that first map from one another. And Clutch, what do you make of E United as a whole right now? E United were good earlier, and they've been heating up all tournament. It was a rough Friday for them as they expected to come out first in their pool they did not do to Kansas City Pioneers but they have already redeemed themselves today with that series against Kansas City a quick 3-0 for them and it was in dominant fashion so E United they've used the momentum that they built through some of the series yesterday taking it into today and they look damn good they do indeed I saw some really good supportive plays from E United in their Pioneers uh, series I was really impressed with kind of the support system that they had especially in some of our harder maps and modes I mean CTF uh, bizarre let's just talk about it real quick I mean absolutely insane stuff coming across from E United and managing to seal the deal against Pioneers who had been heating up all tournament long, Gaskin. Yeah, I think what impressed me most about that comeback and those final moments from a United Slayer. was just it was, yeah, a Slayer, was the, the ability for them to turn around a situation that so many teams would have probably failed in. Okay, some of those moments were probably down to Pioneers choking a little bit, I will say it, but you can only play what's in front of you. And the United, they calmed things down, they made sure they focused on the areas where they needed to, and you saw the eruption afterwards from Spartan and Ryan Oob, and they're the two loudest on the team. Uh, Rain kind of just went, yay, <laughs> but that's okay, you know, you've got, the, you've got the players on the team that are gonna hype up the rest of them, and I like the dynamic of the United. I think these, this is a scary roster to play against. It really is, and Shirzy, speaking of Spartan, he has been stepping up in a big way for his team. Does he need to step up even more so going up against Sentinels? Well, I think he can be confident in the knowledge that, of course, it's Wes said that they had a slow start on Friday, but Saturday they take they took down FaZe relatively easily as well. They dumped them out of the competition, claimed that scalp, and Spartan was a huge integral part of that on the squad on United, so I hope to see him do the same thing here again today. And, you know, it, the sky's the limits for him. Sky is the limits, and I'll tell you what, they're going to have to push that limit a little bit higher if they're going up against Sentinels, which are on the other side of the stage. Let's talk about them. The boys in red, historically winning team here. Absolutely insane and lights out. But they've had a bit of a shaky start to the season. They're coming in fresh. They're coming in pretty hot as well off the back of that G2 series. How are you feeling about them, Clutch? Not great, honestly. Oh. I need to see more. I mean, the expectations for these guys is championships, right? And knowing these guys' career, that's all they want to have. They find themselves very deep in the loser's bracket right now. But I'm looking at one guy on that stage, the most prolific player on the Sentinels roster. That's lethal. He's got to step up, man. Some of these games, statistically, he is falling behind, and that cannot happen. You need all four players gunning to beat teams like E United. And everybody else left in this tournament has four players that are gunning. Lethal. You got to have a big series, and it starts now. It does indeed. Uh, you know, in this series, Gaskin, are you looking at a particular mode here that you really need Sentinels to step up going against E United? Um, I think the first objective game is very important here because we've seen E United have the ability to come back into series, but at the same time, it does rattle them a little bit when they lose that opening game, and it just puts the point of Slayers being the big equation of that series if you win the initial one and. I think the Sentinels have struggled in Slayers here or there previously in certain series, so I'm hoping that if you start things off hot with an objective, that gives you a little bit of momentum going into game number two, win that Slayer, and then suddenly you only need one more, and you'd imagine with the experience on that roster, they could follow from it. Very true. Well, I'll tell you what, our elimination semi-finals brings one of our teams into the elimination final. They need this win on this main stage. We sat down with our players to see exactly how they're feeling about getting this dub. Okay, I think he was maybe trying to burn the ammo or something. Oh. Shut him down with this snipe. You know what, King Nick is one of the snipes. Maybe he'll shut down. 
down face. Oh my! And that was such such a oh my god! I really don't think we'll have an issue making our way far into the bracket. Our flag stairs, our flag stairs, our flag stairs. Kill disadvantage still there, and Spartan still getting kills. What? What? He lived? Oh my Spartan. gosh! He reposed <laughs> himself onto the sword platform. He did. Our losses this event have been kind of heartbreaking in terms of how how we've lost. If we can really just focus on the the minor mistakes, I really think we could beat any team. A little bit more scrappy time being picked up here or there. As Frosty manages to get one, we'll make it two after the melee. Frosty's the best. Oh, Frosty to one. The score between the two. Yeah, Frosty. Look how Frosty goes. Someone's got to take out Cloud9, and I believe we're one of the teams that are capable of doing it. This moment does not happen with this back and forth tug of war scoring and on ball! Sentinels still dominating in the slay department. Overshield in their hands as well. I'm pretty sure the Frost is going to pick up the Rockets too. Lethal versus Suspecta. He'll win that one. A double kill here for Lethal, who is now 13 and 8. Good luck. That's all I have to say. Confident tones from both teams over here, but let's see what that first objective game is going to be, and it's Bizarre CTF. What does that tell you, Gaskin? Um, I think Bizarre CTF is certainly a matchup that is going to be a fun one, because United have beaten Sentinels on this map, but it's also flipped vice versa. I think it's fairly even. What worries me is Slayer Aquarius being game number two for Sentinels. That has been a loss nine times out of ten, pretty much, when you look at their performances historically. So this is a real chance for United to open up. They're really struggling with Slayers, Sentinels, all tournament long. I don't know what's wrong with them, what the, what's off in the ingredients, the recipe seems to be off. Maybe Royal 2 has been his first LAN tournament, They're learning all the time, you know, downloading all this information, but I think they're struggling in the Slayers. There's obviously two Slayers in every single series, so if they're going to lose both of them, it's a hard job for them. Sometimes you don't get to the second Slayer, though, so it's a big game two, obviously, but Sentinels having won the Slayer against G2 showed me a little bit of wherewithal there, but the game I'm looking at is game three, Sentinels, you guys are one of the worst oddball teams I've ever seen in my life. The least efficient team I've seen. It's going to come on the back of all four players getting some objective time because there's always players in these oddball games that have zero to two seconds, and that kind of stuff cannot happen. Everybody's got to be doing their job. Everybody's got to be playing the objective, and you got to be versatile, especially against a team like Cloud9. They are, I'm sorry, E United. E United is one of the most versatile teams we have in the league. If they're in a position to get the oddball, it doesn't matter who it is. They're going to get it, and they get an advantage because of it. Yeah, it's very true. There are major holes in that oddball gameplay, and we've seen that basically all tournament long. And I think United are going to be happy with that oddball right there. I, I mean, I think they're going to be looking at that thinking, we got this, we That's know exactly game. where the holes are, and they're going to capitalize on them. Let's take a look right now, though, at the head-to-head -head player versus player. We talked about him at Lethal versus King Nick. Now, you kind of spoke a little bit about Lethal having to step up here, Clutch. You feeling the same way when looking at this comparison with E United's King Nick? Yeah, I mean, it's not Lethal versus King Nick, obviously, but a 0 0.79 is not good enough to get the job done. King Nick, closer to one, obviously, not having the best tournament himself, but it really is the entire E United roster that has been impressive in their run since that loss to KCP. I am looking at Lethal to get a few more kills in this game, but it I think the player to watch on Sentinels as well that's been popping off all tournament, he's had probably the best individual performance I've seen is Snakebite. I'll say yeah. it outright. Snakebite has been taking over games. You guys got to stop making Snakebite play the objective and let him do his thing. Well, focusing on these two players and that player on your screen in particular, Lethal, even though he hasn't had as many kills as the rest of the squad, there have been really impactful ones here or there, most notably yesterday when he was in a 1v1 on Bazaar. Well, actually, it was a 1v3 situation, but he took a 1v1. He won that fight, and he kept the mid control on he the map. He has made plays. And that's what you need. You need players like that to step up. And on the other side, King Nick has done similar things. He has had some fantastic moments, double kills, triple kills, that have really changed the tide for his team. I think we're used to seeing impactful kills coming across for Lethal, but I think when it comes to the Slayers, however, I think he is, you know, in terms of his ratio, it's a little bit lower than what we are used to seeing from Lethal Absolutely. putting out here. You know, how much is that affecting the Slayers for these teams? Yeah, I think it affects everybody. It, it makes less, you have less space to play with. And what do we know about Royal 2 when he's got space He's a serious problem to try and deal with. He doesn't have that space right now because not everybody's clicking, not everybody's on the same page. I know we've talked a lot about how Lethal needs to step up, but it really is a collective effort from Sentinels to help Lethal in the positions that he's in. He has made several plays to get his team wins. It's all about what's going on before that that needs to step up. Indeed. Support, adjust. 
That's the recipe for this win here for Sentinels. Uh, but I'm excited to see how this one goes down. I'm also excited to see what you guys are thinking on the desk. So it's predictions time. Let's see, who are we going with? I will say, I accidentally already leaked the script, so I'm pretty sure and confident that uh, Sentinels win. Okay, I like it's that shows. I like that shows. It's, uh, yeah. The Sentinels win. I kind of leaked who I am now because yep. I looked at my own card uh -huh, to try and clarify it's this yep. way for sure. I'm going to go with Sentinels as well. E United, totally understand that. He's one of the most on, prolific careers in Halo. I'm expecting him to understand the severity of the moment, understanding his impact on this series. We all step up here and now. What all was right. it that uh, Jen said on desk about Spartan's left cheek? I think the right cheek's going to get involved in this Ooh, one. Both okay. cheeks uh, are going to be slammed, and we're going to see the United win. What? I don't know what's happening right Spicy. now. Spicy. The cheeks, they're coming out. Apparently, they're coming out for United. We'll see right now. Boys, our casters, they are ready and waiting to cast this series. Tony, Shyway, so good to see you. So good to have you here. I am very excited to see the result of this series because obviously one team is going home and one team is going to be meeting Optic. How are you guys feeling about this matchup? All I can say, Lottie, is just, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. I feel like a kid in a candy shop. This is loser semifinals, main broadcast. I got my man Tony here with me. Tony, I mean, how you doing? We got a hell of a series coming up. And Lottie, thank you so much for teeing it up for us, too. No, go for it. Please take it away, gentlemen. Can't wait to hear it. Yeah, man, it feels so good to be here. This is my first time casting on the main Let's stream go. before. And what a better matchup. We're talking E United going up against Sentinels for their tournament lives right now. They're already both guaranteed top four, but now to make it into the top three and to be one series away from making it to the grand finals, a lot of implications right here, right now. A lot of implications. I mean, first off, like you said, top three. Winner of this, they make it in the top three. A massive, massive opportunity for them. And a situation we haven't seen in a long time for Sentinels, right? Championship Sunday, Sentinels with Royal Two on the team. We haven't seen since 2018. And if I know anything about Championship Sunday Sentinels, Tony, they play different. E United, I mean, I think they're prepared, but we'll have to see in this matchup. Of course, our first match in the best of five is our CTF. Can't wait for it. It's going to be a CTF on Bizarre, and there's plenty of resource on the map that both of these teams are going to be fighting for. You're talking about the Rockets. You're talking about the Grapple. Don't forget about the Overshield, but then you even have Manglers on each side along with the Bulldog that all these teams will be going for. Snakebite yeah. going to quickly start off by making his oh. way towards the Grapple, but ends up being shut down almost immediately. So much to control. And so little time, it might seem, as the Dynamo's already flying straight up through the doorway. That player will back off, but Lethal does get away with the OS. And he's going to face off against Nick, too. But the Mangler already coming in play here. Tony, you see how quick it deletes those shields. And Snakebite having a Mangler going to quickly trade it off where Rocket's not able to take down the one shot. So he's going to back down and reset the situation. He even has a teammate with him that they're going to try to advance forward. And here comes a Dynamo Grenade from nice. downtown. Ends up taking down Rain and now going to be advancing forward. Sentinels looking pretty good in the first half of the game. Artillery advantage Sentinels off the opening strat, that's for sure. And because of it, Snakebite already up on BR Sparty. McFly forced to fly down off the bridge, and now Snakebite has earned some positioning for it. Can he work with Royal 2 to make it through the doors? This is the most difficult part of his RCTF, is just fighting your way through with a clean round of slays, and so far, Snakebite gonna take his time. Snakebite backing down all the way towards the market side. Meanwhile, his teammates are actually pushing up. Dynamo Grenades coming in. I think I hear a bit of audio cues coming in, so uh -huh. there's most likely a uh -oh. teammate there. Frosty getting into an individual gunfight against Ryan Noob. Takes him down, and now Snakebite going to advance forward, but has to deal with Timothy first. Yeah, Frosty stealing the attention. Let Snakebite slip through the cracks, but his teammate's now dead. Snakebite now alone in the doorway. He's got advanced positioning, and somehow Ryan Noob not aware of it. They know he's back here now, though, so how does Snakebite play? You can see trades going off in center. Grapple now up. Snakebite with an opportunity to collect it, too. E United already pushed up, though, so Snakebite, he's coming back to get in the fray. Woo, melee kill comes in. Snakebite goes down to one shot. You're seeing the uh -oh. denial nades being thrown. However, Rain throwing an even better nade to finish off uh -oh. Snakebite. Lethal going to fall as well, so two members down for the boys in blue. With yep. E United going to take advantage of that. They now have the overshield in hands. That's not good, Alex. Definitely not. I mean, it's good for United. Nice little battle of patience for them, right? To whittle down the resources of Sentinels and then find a moment to then push up and counter. And you can see that at a Ryan Noob. Two down already. Flag out for Ryan Noob as Snakebite, a line of defense. 
Snakebite might be able to stop this at the doorway, assuming he can take Ryan. Nope. And he does slow him down, but Nick is there to retrieve it. So the flag's still moving, but that might be just enough for Sentinels to make it difficult. Love the play coming out of E United right there. Ryan New put it doing maximum damage over towards the cafe, backs down, and allows his teammate, King Nick, to get the cleanup kill. Yep. Unselfish play coming in from E United. And that's exactly what they're known for. But here comes the MVP, Frosty, oh. getting the challenge on terrain, taking him down and earning himself a bulldog. And he's going to combine that with the thrust. He's about to combine that with a whole lot of things. He got a rocket up in the map, too. You gotta love the fact that Snakebite was able to delay that flag and give Sentinels an opportunity to earn back the map. Here can they get the rockets though? They've been picked up, and Snakebite has them. And we talked about this pre-match. You gotta shut Paul down. He's got the grapple, he's got the rockets, he's got quite an opportunity, and that opportunity is now. Grapples up to Cafe, but not able to see any contest uh, anybody contesting him over here, but there is some players down below making their way towards the Rocket Alley. Nice. One ends up going down. Snakebite now looking for the second go. one. Able to get the double kill. E United going multiple oh. down, and the third one's gonna come in. That's gonna be a triple kill being earned by Snakebite. The IGL putting in the work as well. Snakebite with the opening he needs for his team, and this man still hitting shots. Can't quite get out but they couldn't press them just yet. The OS is about to pop up center. Sentinels did not want to fly. Instead, they want to continue to slay and delay this team and give themselves another chance to push up. This time it's up to Lethal and Frosty to do the damage. And you can see how well they're set up on the map here, Tony. It's just a matter of time before they break through the doors. Locking down both sides of perimeters and the collapse once again coming in, but two down goes Sentinels. So they're going to have to slow things down just a bit. Luckily, Lethal oh, having Royal the extra two. shield. Look at that. Royal 2 ends up getting a double kill on screen. No way. Lethal putting down the challenge here. We might see the first flagpole coming in out of Sentinels, but they still need to slay out one more time. Ladies and gentlemen, don't forget to pick up the AR off spawn. I don't know if you saw that on the kill feed, but Royal 2 with two AR kills has now given Lethal a little bit more time to make a flag play, though unfortunately, E United, they stop it short, and it looks like there's nobody on Sentinels in position to continue the run. Spartan currently 8 and 7, also having an assist on the board as well. The leading slayer of this E United oh. roster of Royal 2 going to shut him down almost immediately as numbers going back in favor of Sentinels. Royal 2 going to go down as well, courtesy of King Nick's Bulldog. The man's barking. Oh, he barking. He might have to bark a little more. There we go. Sparty will drop snake bite. Shoddy still in play. He's also got the Mangler as well as they walk out front. E United looking to earn center map here. King Nick will play anchor from behind. He does not want to flank. He'll hide in the vents for now. And he can use the grapple to get up through too. So nice use of the grapple to get the rotation and positioning on the Sentinels here. King Nick putting the shots in onto Snakebite, but not able to finish off the kill. Bradley Bergstrom uh -oh. coming in with the nade, getting the double kill. And now we're seeing Frosty start to advance forward. But hold on, yep. that, that nade coming in seemingly out of nowhere, oh having two players in his Woo. sights. Frost can be forced to back down, but here comes the cavalry out of Sentinels. The movement and awareness out of Frosty in these situations, he knows exactly where they are. And look at him dipsy doodle his way out of bottom mid and just give himself opportunities. Can they find the man? He's still being elusive. <laughs> no. Nick's gonna try to stop him, he will. But the live out of Frosty gives Sentinels opportunities. OS now up, Royal 2 on top of it. Okay, it looks like he wanted to grapple it. But Matt will take it instead and use the grapple to barge through the doors. So let's see if Sentinels finally pull it off. Frosty being elusive, playing his life snake by utilizing the grapple to get into the enemy base. So lots of movement tech coming in out of Sentinels oh, yeah. and the first Flag cap is going to be pulled here and actually hopefully make it out of the door. It's all the way towards the bomb. Uh -oh. Snake bike getting right behind enemy lines ends up trading out kills here. So now it's a 3v3 scenario. Sentinels need to slay. Oh man, actually such a huge trade out of E United there. If you let Snake Bite survive, then that's an extra player on the map and an extra nuisance for E United. Instead, they go down in numbers and the flag now sits in the locker, and now it's up to Frosty to win that 1v1. Unfortunately, did he just shoot a body? Uh-oh. Uh, no way. Did he just shoot a body game one against Sentinels against Frosty of all people? I hope I didn't see that, Tony. Hey, I mean, a lot of these players in the lobby don't mind shooting some bodies. I feel like that's it's what Royal 2 and Snakebite were famous for back in the day. And Frosty, they're oh, doing he, it. Frosty and we already know it's Party <laughs> and Ryan New will shoot some bodies as well. Ryan New shooting some live bodies, trying to put them onto oh, the black yeah. screen, backing down over towards the rocket side. And now he's going to slow things down completely. They want to get one more pick before they feel comfortable enough to push forward. Damn, all of a sudden we can breathe here. 
<laughs> I guess Ryan Noob's not breathing, though. He's dead. <laughs> Frosty's got a shotgun, and it looks like the entirety of Sentinel's now pushing up through the cafe side. What? The entirety of E United, they're all going to run in file and take out Sentinel's. There's a double for Sparty. Didn't expect to see that one, but E United, they always find ways to bounce back. Well, that's why they call them E United. They run United. They, they run in unison <laughs> with each other. Yeah, apparently. Three man pack going to pounce no on them, led by Sparty. The dog overshield coming up in about two seconds here. Easy slay going in from Sparty, earning himself that overshield. E United have sent those two down, and they're about to take advantage of it. Oh, my needler? Okay, get out of his face. Sparty going to knock him down. All of a sudden, Sentinel's on the ropes because of Spartan, who takes a double. Is that enough, though? E United, they still have members in position. Reigns up front. You got Ryan Noob up above on Rockets, and King Nick going to take his time with the grapple. They could still earn an aggressive play out of this. And look how evenly matched both of these teams are. They both have had position to be able to grab the flag and make some moves, but coming right off of spawns, they're slaying out and defending that midpoint of the game, so nobody able to get that flag okay. very far. King Nick is oh. going to go down quickly, and Ryan is starting to make his move. Oh, baby, it's a bloodbath out center map. We got bodies dropping left and right here, but Sentinels, they still find a way to win their exchange in center map. Royal 2, he's moved up. What can he get off of this position? He's got lethal with him. King Nick, not too much you can do in a pinch. Can he keep it up though? Sparty McFly, a line of defense. Lethal got to come in, but Lethal getting tagged by Nates. He'll back down. Lethal going down to one shot here on the palm tree side. Goes in for the challenge, but did not have the shields to put up a fight on that one. Spartan now going to be advancing forward. Meanwhile, off the screen, Frosty able to take down Ryan Noob, and the Dynamo Grenades getting some maximum value uh -oh. out of it. The Mangler coming in as well. Easy kill on to Royal 2, and Spartan somehow still alive. That's right. Royal 2 might have needed to check that 8 o'clock. Spartan, oh he's just spinning and dropping bodies. There goes Snakebite. Another down. That's Frosty on the feed, and somehow Spartan the dog, he will scamper away from the action. This is an opportunity for E United yet again. Two minutes and 20 seconds on the clock, and we have not seen a flag cap on neither side yet. However, King Nick in the cafe, Spartan starting to advance forward. They also have Ryan Noob as well. Frosty is going to be the first one to go down. So does Snakebite here. So two down for Sentinels, okay. and E United are about to pull yet another flag. E United might be able to do this. Sparty does not want to. Actually, I take it back. He's going to get the flag right away. And this timing might be perfect, too. Overshield up. Ryan Noob, if he collects it, he's a line of defense to escort the flag, but doesn't have it just yet. Flag out center. Snake by Frosty. They're still up to fight Rain and Ryan Noob. But can they kill him? They're still alive here. Ryan Noob takes one. Is Spartan going to drop into the action? The OS still on the map. And Sparty no. can't use it. He gets back smacked. And I think the return is inevitable. Frosty now advancing forward over to the bomb tree. He does have a teammate with him, so working a one-two combo. The bait and switch should be coming in. However, Rain gonna come into the party, ends up going down quickly, and another flag being run here by Sentinels. But how far will they get this one? Sentinels turn to run the flag over extenders. Do you see any? Tony, I didn't see anyone over. Actually, no, there's one above. It's Sparty McFly. He's waiting in cafe. Rain already got a kill. Lethal died because of it. That flag didn't get as far as intended. Now Frosty, options limited. Man's gotta back down and the flag's being taken on the other side as well. Double dilemma here for Sentinels. Oh, Frosty tried to make something happen. He had a mangler and a grapple right on the ground, but sadly is going to be taken down. Ryan Noob now having that position over towards the top. Rockets chasing the player down to bottom. Bulldog spawn, but doesn't want to spend too much time with them. He has to go for this flag. 44 seconds on the clock, wow. and he doesn't want to go to overtime. Ryan Noob just going to zip on into the base, drop Frosty as he does it. Flag in hand. He'll take it through Alley. Two already dead as well, but Ryan Noob got to get out of dodge. He's got a snake bite behind him. Nick will pick up the flag instead. Ryan Noob still alive and because of it they got to deal with this man that's going to slow him down as they chase the flag but somehow the flag did not get far Ryan Noob having a grapple right there definitely could have made some plays but he never was able to get up to full shield so the return gonna come in and with 18 seconds on the clock I'm not sure that anybody's in position yeah. to get a pull we might just be going into an overtime. Oh, we Alex. might, Tony. Uh, I think we, sorry, not might, we definitely are going into overtime at this rate, unless somebody gets on that flag in two seconds, which not happening. What a battle to start our series, Tony. It just goes back and forth, and nobody breaks away with a flag past that halfway point. 
Ladies and gentlemen, this is the elimination semifinals that oh, yeah. you want. Both of these teams having to go big or go home, and one cap will take it all in this overtime. Sparring immediately going in for the Mangler, but not going up rockets like he normally does this time. Going in down low, trading it out for yep. a Bulldog, and looking to make a play with his flank. Da -da 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 -da. Sneaking up on the snake, but he's now dead. Ryan knew with the OS as well, all the artillery in the favor of E United, so a heavily won exchange for the opening strat. But Ryan Duke still can't quite find the chance to push up here. You got three members of Sentinels playing defense. Ryan Noob having the overshield in hands here. Now going to start to advance forward over towards that flag. The first flag that flag has been pulled, oh. but sadly he's not going to be able to get very far. But here comes Spartan. He's down to one shot. He okay. has some friends. E United now going to advance the flag over towards the double doors and onto the 50% portion of the map. Is this enough for E United? You can see Sentinels already on the return. Two members of EU still up, still in the bar, getting pelted by Nades. Options limited here for Sparty, so he got he has no opportunity to get back to that flag. So once again, reset, but not their positioning. They still have that. Nick with them as well. They can go back for the flag. Sentinels on the opposite side map, though, so they might overextend to the opposite flag, and what we might see is a standoff, especially if Spartan stays alive. Does not want to deal with Royal 2 there. And with Sentinels recently getting that return, E United fighting back here, why don't we go into an Astro listening oh. and find out what the comms are sounding like with Spartan and Vrent. You gotta look at flag spreading? I, I don't fighting? know if I can. Spider, 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 Spider. Spider. Flag I want with Megler on me, guys. I'm tied to their tree. I died to their oh, tree. They're about, they're about, they're about. Grapple that out. Grapple to it. Grapple to it. Weak. He's one shot. He's throwing. Dead. Dead. Our, 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 our nerd. Our nerd. On flag as well. Two shots. Obi. They're blocked. Frosty. That was weak. Obi's in five. We try to put him He's weak on it. Watch out the mirror. Frosty. He's got to put him out. I saw the mirror. Frosty. And their library is one shot. On Obi, weak guys. I can spike their library. I can spike their library. Library one shot. And one go. Bottom mid weak. I dynamo library. He's one shot truck. Two on OB weak. Watch out spikes. Waiting OB weak. Watch out their library. He's got, he's got, he's got, he's got OB. Watch out their library. I'm living. We got a lot of damage in OB. He's out of OB. He's out of OB. Comps are fast. Not frantic though. They seem very collected. Very controlled, the Tony. It looks like they know what they're doing. And I mean, only to be expected. A top four team currently in this tournament looking for top three. And Ryan Noop, he's the impact player at this moment. Closest to flag. Great kill by Ryan Newby. That's the initial one that they need to at least start the flag coming in. A fresh three down here coming in out of Sentinels. And I'm not sure there's anybody uh -oh. positioned to contest Ryan Newby making it towards the 50% portion. And at Where least someone at? has to be out rotating and overextending over towards the palm tree side. Otherwise, Snake this bite. will be a flag. Yeah. Snakebite might be able to do it. He's still there at the doorway. Ryan Newby going to try to get the last link to get tagged up. He's now dead, but he hands the flag off. Oh my. And Sparty plants it in, and that's a game one to E United, they'll start the series strong. E United, utilizing that teamwork, that aggression, but also the patience as well. I talk about it all the time. E United know how to change the pace in the game. They can slow things down when they Ooh. need to. They can speed it up when they have the numbers. They showed it right then, and now they're up 1-0 in the series. Tony, let me just tell you, we better conserve our energy here, because this is looking like it's going to be a long one. That went down to the end of overtime, and it was just a brawl back and forth, trading blows. But ultimately, like you said, E United, the control of the pace, the control of the weapons, they found their footing, especially in overtime. They just continued to hammer them, and finally they broke through, thanks to the flank at Orion Duke, the man so elusive. He found his opportunity, and he played it so carefully, too. The handoff at the end, the teamwork communication to be able to hand that flag the moment he dies with no lag time in between, they get that cap. And we're looking at the stats here. 29 kills, nine assists coming out of Spartan leading as far as KDA, but look at also King Nick Royalty in the house. Uh -oh. 25 kills, 10 assists as well. Why don't you tell me some of the stats here on Sentinel side and well, what are they telling you? You said King Nick, royalty in the house. I see uh, a royalty, a royal two, <laughs> I guess. I mean, on the other side. And a stat line that I think is uh, uncharacteristic of royal two. The man had 14 kills. He was very negative. So if anybody's got to step up in that next game, I hope it's royal two. We know we haven't seen him on land in a long time. There's no routers in play this time as well. So he's got all the opportunity in the world. He's popped off before, but... I mean, this is it. This is the end zone. We got to see this man make plays and get slays. So happy to see Royal 2 here. I mean, as much as I love you, Alex, but I'm sorry. Royal 2 hey, is my I mean, favorite if you want to drop me for he's Royal 2, he's my favorite that's Canadian, okay. Man. That's okay, man. <laughs> you know, he, I think he's earned it. He's man's a world champ. Twice. That, that triple kill coming out of Sneak Bite was nice, but sadly, even that wasn't enough nope. to stop E-United. 
from coming out on top here in overtime. We're going into game number two. And guess what? That's going to be a slayer. And mind you, I don't know, I don't know if you've been paying attention to the stats. E United are one of the best slayer yeah. teams that we have yeah. here in the tournament. How will Sentinels respond? I don't know. This is worrisome for Sentinels. And this is something that was mentioned on the desk as well. Sentinels, they do tend to struggle in Slayer historically, but especially on Aquarius. Aquarius just is not their map, not yet. And of course, you know, having World 2 come back into the fold more recently for Formal, you know, maybe it takes some time to get that chemistry, to find those roles, to find that footing once again. But they don't have that time. They don't have the luxury. It's got to happen here. It's got to happen in Aquarius Slayer because if they go down here and they're down in... An 0-2 situation, I mean, making that reverse sweep, Tony, I, I don't know. It's hard to say <laughs> if they can do it. Well, you know, I don't, I, we'll, we'll, get the, we'll cross that bridge when we okay. get to it. Okay, As that's of right fair. now, Sentinels do have a chance, and whenever you have Frosty and Royal 2 and their slaying ability, I feel right. like you always have a puncher's chance, no matter what. It's any given Sunday, if you ask me, and as of right now, I'm, I'm gonna, I'd be happy to put my chips in on Sentinels. What I'm thinking is they can't let United control the game because we've watched the United play Slayer time and time again, especially on recharge, the way that they control the map with a perimeter and just don't budge. They don't give up any opportunities. Other teams, they get aggressive. They pounce on spawns. United, they don't really do that. They hold position yeah. and they make, they make you come to them. They really preserve their lives. I think Ryan Noob is the key person, the key player to shut down to ensure this doesn't happen. Because as far as I know, Ryan Noob's entire game plan is to just stay alive. His entire game plan is just survival, just to poke and prod and annoy you and give Spartan the chance to go ham and do his thing. So if they can shut down Royal Noob, uh, Royal Noob, <laughs> Ryan Noob, imagine combining those two together. If they can shut down Ryan Noob, then I think that Spartan's options are limited and maybe Spartan can't go huge like he normally does. I remember when we were on the analyst desk, we had multiple people saying that they wanted to see some nerdy plays and Ryan knew, yeah, Ryan knew nerds, definitely going to make some plays happen. But I've also been impressed by his slaying as well. He's kind of that secondary slayer on the team. So it's crazy because you have Snakebite, that IGL, Ryan knew that IGL as well. And they both can slay out at any given moment while also yeah. making those play calls. I always found that very interesting because normally an IGL will play back and maybe bait his teammates more, play a little bit more slower, but both of them are always on the front line. Well, I would say Ryan Nuba is that type of player who will, will play back and play safe and, and play annoying and play to live. A snake bite, though, recently, like you said, the man has been in the fray. He's been popping off. He's been making plays. And you love to see it, but you'd also love to see Frosty steal the spotlight. You'd like to see Royal 2 steal the spotlight. You'd like to see Lethal stay alive and be a nuisance in situations. He has no business staying alive. If they play their game well, I think they got a shot. It has to happen here. Slayer, Aquarius game two. I've been so excited to watch this rivalry develop. There's sometimes a little bit of bad blood between these two teams, yeah. but I'm sure they've made it up okay. since then. Either way, <laughs> both of them super talented, and they're bringing it here in the fight here in game number two. It's going to be on Aquarius, and who else will we start off with other than Spartan the Dog? I mean, you talked about a little bit of drama, a little bit of storylines. Sparty, I mean, he leads them with the energy out of this man and the energy in his play. What a way to start a double, and you can see his face when he hits it. He is heated. Spartan quickly advancing forward over towards the P side of the map. Meanwhile, Ryan New kind of over towards that bottom mid side, going to be slayed out quickly, and so is King Nick. So Sentinels doing a great job of bouncing back literally right off of spawn. Like you said, they bounce back. It's a relatively even start here. Sentinels with a one kill advantage, but Sparty playing it slow. Do they know he's in the corner? He's going to pounce down on Frosty. Frosty now got to dodge, duck, dip, dive, and dodge out of there. And that's exactly what he does, though he dies shortly later. Two now dead, and Sparty with positioning. Royal 2 having the camouflage in hand still and now advancing forward toward that top car side. Very important player, but the heat wave ends up spotting him, putting him down to one shot and eventually okay. taking him down. Meanwhile, Spartan <laughs> making some plays and letting them know about it. You yeah. see it in his face. I love these face cams uh -huh. coming in. Spartan, let him know. There's so many things I love about Land Halo, and one of them is the face cams. Look at Sparty's face every time this man gets a kill. He is an emotional leader for this team. When he's popping off, everybody does in unison. And now Sparn still having that heat wave in hands, but catches a stray grenade here over towards the fridge side. Tries to be crafty, play his life, ends up getting his shields back, and now going to fight back. But he's going to have multiple players here on the P side. How we get out of the situation? <laughs> he's still alive. <laughs> Caught in the fridge, oh. in the back of the fridge. And they're all dead because of it. That's three dead and frosty with a big opportunity on his hands. They are still at a deficit. Did they know Rain is back there? Oh, they do. Watch out. 
Wait, wait, oh, okay. I got scared for a second, but the man's dead and the camo's up, so Frosty got to reconsider his positioning here. 13 to 11 lead in favor of Sentinels. Frosty gets a big kill. Coming in, camouflage now in the hands of Lethal. He's gonna try to make something happen here on the peace side, and he does have some teammates with him. The shots quickly going on to Nick, but Nick has some friends okay. on the fridge. Big trade out from Sentinels. Lethal gonna drop, gets a trade as well. Score dead even because of it. Frosty still with the heat wave. Multiple thrusts out. Frosty could double back for one himself. Up the survivability, because he's gonna need it. All members of E United out on car here as well. And Frosty looking for that opening kill. Looks like multiple already died. E United numbers advantage, but the pounce in the utility. Here it comes, Frosty. He'll take rain, snaps on the Ryan for the double, but can't quite land it. We talked about Ryan coming into this, Tony. He's difficult to kill. Daddy is a great job of Ryan who prioritizing his life and using the dynamo grenades. If it wasn't for that grenade, Frosty would have played for the one shot. But sadly, the dynamo grenades forced him to back down and reset for Frosty. Okay. Very good at resetting. Ends up going 9 and 3. Now we're going to advance forward over to where oh. the blue flag ends up getting himself a double kill. And now going to swap that empty heat wave out for the command. Oh, wait, no. It's throwing some ammo. Get that back. <laughs> Get that back, Bradley. My man, Bradley Bergstrom, looking ice cold out here in game two. He's got to keep it up, though. 21 to 18. Royal 2 going to pounce on from above. And Tr Frosty trusts that he has it, and because of it, he takes his second kill and extends their lead a little bit. Snakebite up, he needs help though. Nick and Sparty coming in for the collapse. Snakebite lifts, gets it, gets two. Snakebite turns two out of that situation with the help from Frosty, and because of it, now they're, they're now four ahead. Great damage coming in out of Frosty and the communication for Snakebite to come in for the cleanup kills, and let's not go anywhere. Frosty's going off. The man's 11 and 3 at the moment, oh, man. and clearly making some plays. Championship Sunday Sentinels, they hit different, especially when Frosty is popping off. Rain trapped like oh. a rat. He's dead. A frenzy for Frosty, who is now shut down. But I mean, that will help pad the stats, that's for sure. They currently have a two kill lead to the boys in blue, but E United looking to eat away at that. And Spar now going to swap things out and grab himself a heat wave. Looking to make some plays and he's somebody over to the black screen as he's advancing uh -huh. forward towards the utility. Has it horizontal right now, ends up shooting, but nobody home just yet. Has to throw a denial oh, grenade. Oh, oh. Excellent damage coming in out of him. Ryan Noob ends up being awarded the kill, and E United are about to collapse. Chef Sparty looking for victims to fry. And it looks like Royal 2 might be the first one. He'll go down. Snakebite does get the trade. Sparty, can he get lethal as well? Lethal gonna poke and prod, and he might want to back down. Sparty, I mean, when he's popping off, he doesn't miss, Tony. Yeah, but I love that play out of lethal, putting down the damage, sure. forcing Sparty to back down, prioritizing his life. Sentinels are all being very hard kills at the moment until, <laughs> until bodies started to drop. Okay. The assists come in. Sparty's actually not done yet. Uh -oh. Ends up getting a second one as the Slay's going in favor of E United. And as they have numbers, they're now putting pressure on the spawners as well. Like you said, United starting to speed up here. If they take a clean round of Slay, Sentinels on the back foot, they don't need that. I don't want that. So they got to make sure they get trades in these situations. And Spartan going to make it difficult. Royal 2 drops 2, though, and that's a great answer. 32 now because of it. And a slight advantage. You can see they have top map control. Frosty on one side, Lethal on the other, and Ryan Duke spawning opposite base. This is a great little setup for Sentinels. All of them spawning opposite base and a perimeter for Sentinels as well. Can they pinch and collapse? Both of these teams have been fighting for the heat wave control, and World 2 ends up having it in hands. You're noticing the E United are really stuck over towards the yellow base, and the nades are flying in. They okay. might have actually done some damage. Here comes the collapse in this for Sentinels. It. Ends up earning himself an assist, and now he's going to take the back way. As there's still, I might be one more player back there, but World 2, the final one alive. E United doing a okay. great job of defending their spawn. Royal 2 ultimately not present in that fight, but I do like the fact that he runs back to center immediately to get positioning to ready himself for the spawns. Unfortunately, Ryan Duke does split spawn out, and now he's getting pinched from two sides, so he has to back down. Unfortunately, E United also have positioning on the camo because of it. Royal 2, he'll snap onto Nick, do some damage. Nick now weak, drop down the bottom mid. Can he get out? He cannot, and shutting down Nick, that's massive. Snake by letting King Nick know who's New Jersey's finest right there, <laughs> taking him down as Frosty is over here on the bottom B side, doing a great job of staying alive. Again, Sentinels really valuing their lives. Uh -oh. And that's one of the reasons why they're still within striking. He needs to Frosty now to try to advance forward. Ends up getting the big kill, not oh, done no. yet. Tries to get the melee, but Sparring's able to take him down. E United with the best of that exchange. They got a numbers advantage. They're gonna push up on the map because of it. Snakebite does take a trade. Spartan, he'll grab the nade. No, he doesn't grab the nades as he goes up. 
He's going to have to double back now as well. They're starting to slow down the pace of play. End zone here, Tony. Final 10 kills for Sentinels, 40 to 39. Positioning across their side. Map for Sparty. He'll tag up a couple, but Sentinel's going to push on through. Sparty recognizing he's out of the field of play. Man's got a curb slide his way into the action and into his death. Now 43. I don't like the play coming in out of Sparty right there. He wanted to get aggressive. He thought he needed the kill, but sadly there was multiple Sentinels players, so he ends up hitting the black screen, and Snakebite is once okay. again still taking advantage, taking down Ryan New, advancing forward over toward the P side, and here comes the nades out of young PJ. Not getting the kill just yet, though. E United are battered, and Sentinels has them on the ropes. Sparty, he'll pull oh, Sparty with the wiggles, though he bounces back a little bit. 43, three kill deficit and a double for Sparty. A camo popping up shortly here. They got top map control. Royal 2, he is alone, and he's about to die. Tony, this is dicey territory. Spartan advancing forward over towards the top. P shots are starting to fly. Has Lethal and Snakebite in his sights. Off screen, Frosty taking down Ryan Noob. That was his teammate over towards the 48. P side. Frosty might be jumping over towards uh -oh. me. That's going to be Frosty with the sidekick, ripping apart Spartan shields and forcing him to run away with his tail between his legs. Limited options for E United. They were forced to back down, and now Sentinels has the map. Lethal, he's trapped, though. Look at that push out of E United. That was beautifully timed to collapse on to. Wait a sec, 49. Despite it, 46 to 49 here, just one to close it. Frosty out front looking for him. He might find him in utility. Oh, he will. Can he take the kill? No, he won't take the kill. Oh, but the nade will do the trick. Snake bite will save what could have been pretty heartbreaking for Sentinels, but they do give us a series, Tony, one to one. Tied up at one of these beautiful bounce back coming in out of Sentinels, which the toys have been one of their weaker game types and one of E United's strongest ones. But throw the stats out the window, because right hey, now hey, in hey. the elimination bracket semifinals, both of these teams won. It's all about who wants it more in this one. Mm -hmm. That's why I throw stats. That's, no, I that's what I was getting. You, the moment you said stats, I, I grabbed the paper I'm out sorry. in front of you and you I did. moved it a couple meters away. Because last time you had stats, you were not very kind to them. You threw them on the broadcast, Tony. That is not acceptable. But what is acceptable is that win at a Sentinels. That's beautiful. That gives us a series. Now one yes. to one. And like you said, uncharacteristic for Sentinels to find their footing on Slayer and Aquarius of all maps. But now, because the series is tied, I think it's anything goes. We got an objective coming up next, Tony. That we do. And I might be a bit premature with this one, but I think we're going to game five. I, I, I have I have a feeling. You know, I like to follow my heart. Uh, I believe uh -huh. we're going to a game number five. I don't know who's going to take it, but we're about to see some incredible Halo. E United going up against Sentinels. The winner of this advances forward into the elimination finals to play for the grand finals. They're guaranteed top four, but neither one of these teams are happy with that. Let's take a look at some of these replays. Some beautiful plays on both sides, that's for sure. Frosty starting to shine, which is great to see out of Frosty, right? Sentinels typically play around Frosty, or Frosty, I guess, maybe plays around Sentinels and finds his big moments because of it. But I, I want to say, you know, kind of uncharacteristically quiet in this tournament leading up to this point. And all of a sudden, Frosty with a killing frenzy to start the game, I think that's exactly what Sentinels needed to regain some of that confidence. So seeing him pop off again, I mean, it brings me back to H5, Tony. Maybe Frosty has something to say today. Man with 18 and 10 right there in a slayer really going off. We're going to find out if we can replicate that same amount of success in the kill columns here in Oddball, yeah. because if they can slay out, most likely Sentinels will be able to put some more time on the boards. But obviously, it's obviously hard because United trying to do the same exact thing. Right. And here's the thing. Oddball Live Fire is up next. And Oddball Live Fire, I, I, I don't know if it's just, you know, bad luck or whatever it is, but that's two maps in a row that I'd say were not really favored for Sentinels. Despite me saying that, though, <laughs> they did beat Optic yesterday in Oddball Live Fire. Wild finish to that game. But can they do it again against a team like E United? Tony, the last time I witnessed E United on Live Fire, the way they play this map, the way they control the top of the map and hold position, they're so difficult to break through. I don't know. And as you saw toward the bottom left corner of your screen, 30.4 kills per game coming in out of Royal 2 and Oddball. He's actually ranked fourth here in Anaheim. So clearly okay. going off here. And then when you have somebody that can slay as strong as him, he can open up so many avenues for the rest of your team to push forward, make some moves towards the power-ups, or even steal away that oddball and get into your setups earlier. That's the power. 
that Royal 2 brings. And not only that, but they've been teaming for how long? I mean, how do you replicate right. that chemistry? <laughs> it's nice to see the boy back. It's nice to see the team back together, the chemistry back, like you said. And I think it's continuing to form as the tournament goes on. Royal 2 going to be the one to watch out for on the side of Sentinels, on the side of E United. I mean, I think Sparty is always in the spotlight. But this is it. Game 3, the tiebreaker for the series and the momentum setter for it as well. Live fire oddball. Who's going to pop off on this opening strat? Both of these teams will be fighting for that sniper rifle, the power up, and the heat wave. Oh, the heat wave. At the bottom <laughs> mid. Let you me say, say heat? And heat you, you heat the players to the black screen, you just send them flying. The heat wave. To the black screen. They're both going to be fighting for all of the weapons and the power. So those who can control the sandbox most likely will come out on top. We have to start off with the uh -oh. MVP. Frosty. About to get yeeted off the map, unfortunately. Sparty just locked down his options early on there. Now he's dead, and the ball taken, I believe, by E United. Nope, I take it back. Sentinel still found that ball despite the deficit, but can they hold on to it? Sparty's here to hunt down Royal 2. Royal 2, a jiggle peek won't save you. He's now dead, and Nick with the ball and a snipe in his hands. Man, Sparty's always had an incredible shot, and we're starting to really see it here in Halo Infinite as we've seen them get some uh -oh. incredible shots with the shock rifle with the sniper and now the heat wave coming into play making that player one shot ends up coming in onto the cleanup kill with Leto but not done yet wants to advance forward but snake the ball bite. carries to be taken down Curtis is snake by getting the double kill but luckily Spartan going to shut yep. him down. Sparty definitely needed the shutdown on snake bite. Can he do a little more? Royal 2 gonna get melted. Rock ball in the hands or not in the hands of Sparty. Sparty doesn't want to pick it up. I mean he's got all the weapons and if he hits shots, then Sentinels are in trouble. There's a body on the lethal, and they gonna go off. Sparty gotta get out of dodge here, but Frosty now dead, so limited resources for Sentinels. They might need to rethink their approach. And as I say that, they're pinching him from both sides. That's a great way to shut down Spartan. A little bit of Slayer 2.0 being played at the moment, because both of these teams having to get a full round of slays before they're able to commit to that ball time and getting it over towards their setup. You can scrap some ball time one or two seconds here, but it doesn't mean anything until those seconds start to turn to minutes. Lethal advanced that ball just a little bit forward, yep. but he knows he needs the slays, so quickly back down. Meanwhile, there is a power that should be coming into play very soon. Lethal about to walk into multiple here. Gonna have to back out, does take the ball. I like the little rotation with it, but his options so limited. Doesn't take the trade on Nick either. Rain and Nick, they get two kills. And now E United with an opportunity to set up for the ball. Camo about to spawn too. They get all this, they've got playmaking opportunities here, Tony. E United having Heat Wave and Camouflage in the hands of Spartan. Doesn't get spotted as he makes his way over toward the sandbag. Uh -oh. Easy shot onto Frosty. Two. Now gonna work towards two. the top mid. Ends oh. up getting himself the double kill. But two out of four players go down. And the information coming in for E United knowing exactly where the final two players are. Pretty wild out of Sentinels, right? Sending, I think, three or four through that hallway. And if there's so many players there, it's just, you know, there's only so much Spartan can do to deal with the resources. Despite it, the Ryan Noob still holds the ball on B. If he's in trouble, he can toss it off the map. But you know this man, he will wait till the last second. Two already dead, Royal Two still milking. Or sorry, oh, Ryan Noob still milking. <laughs> Either way, the man's dead and he's off the map. And so is Snakebite. He took a dip into the, the water. I mean, sometimes you gotta clean yourself off when you're playing so dirty. He getting ready for the big game today. You know, he tried to get that interception on the ball, but he ended up diving right out of bounds. And to, <laughs> and to make mistakes were made there. Okay. As two down go E United and Sentinels. So a 2v2 scenario, Rain nice. gonna try to back down with the sniper rifle, not able to oh. do so. And now Snakebite gets a turn with the long rifle. Nick's gotta watch that left butt cheek because Snakebite just tagged it. Looking for more here. Ryan Noob with a nade in and Nick back for the challenge. Snipe now down and can they collect it? Royal 2, no opportunities to survive here with 53 on the board and a snipe in the hands of actually it's in the hands of frosty we better see what he's up to I, he's on the desk screen where is that snipe gonna go because i think it's gonna dictate the pace of the match rain now gonna make his way over towards the seaside map they say when it rains it pours here comes some nades not catching anybody just yet, but we're going to out-rotate the enemy uh -oh. team and go right over towards that Zambags. And you wanted to know where the sniper rifle was. Uh -huh. It's in the hands of Timothy Tinkler. He's about to make it rain, Tony, if he gets a shot. Camo about to spawn as well. So a dilemma for both teams here. Lethal near it. Ball also on the scoreboard. Might have needed a teammate there, but trades go through. Rain. Ooh. Oh my, that's a 360. You know, sometimes you just get a little extra on the scoreboard for your kill. Rain hitting the 360 kick flip, taking down the first one, <laughs> goes in for the second one, but rotating the ball forward because his eyes 
on the prize. Same as Frosty. Camouflage and Heat Wave. There's any chance that they can shut down the setup. It's going to be on the backs of the former MVP. Frosty now uh -oh. getting sneaky. This Here we go. Going to make a play. First one. one goes down. Second one has the ball. Two, Two. fast hands. That's going to be a double kill. Not able to get the triple as Frosty goes down. But the damage has been done. Not enough damage, though, because Sparty's still on the ball. 65 here as he manages to play it off despite the loss in numbers. E United, they're so efficient. Not only do they play the ball, Ryan Noob's in position to collect another one. And Sentinels, if they don't find a way to deny this efficiency, they're not going to deny this game. Loving the plays coming in out of E United. Finally, Ryan Noob is going to fall. Spartan gets a big kill and lets the enemy team know about it. And the denial grenades coming in. And so is the heat wave. And to find oh. the player over towards top mid, easy kill coming out of him. Watch Having out. another one towards bottom tower, gonna try to work on the double kill. Tries to be crafty, but finally is gonna be taken down. Snakebite gets the best of him, but they're still bleeding time. 72 and counting, Snakebite will push up mid. Shots in the rain to back him down. A minute left on the timer here, and Snakebite tagging out the house. He got two members on his right-hand side with the push, but Snakebite gotta watch his own right. Man's getting tagged up, that ball. Looks like it's in the hands of Sentinel somehow, and two kills as well. Maybe a moment to breathe for these boys in blue. And the power coming up, up very soon here, so Snakebite needs to get the slays, but they also have to make sure they keep control of that power up street. One player goes down, Snakebite advancing forward towards Sandbags, gonna drop down oh to bait the oddball. Shots going in, takes down one, and repulses right up to top mid to avoid all of the nonsense over towards oh, the bottom of the map. Beauty. And repulses Smarty off the map. He thought he was gonna play the ball, he played Spartan. <laughs> he, play, he plays, <laughs> that's exactly what he does. Snakebite, my god, the big brain on this man as he just dips and dives out of the action. He's coming in from awkward angles here too. Ryan Noob, does he know he's there? Nick gets a kill as well though. Advantage slays United, so now it's up to Snakebite once again. And he's got no ammo to do it. A bit of a ring around the rosy with the scoreboard, but he's now down. Snakebite gonna try to hold it. Frosty with a kill too. And they got 21 seconds with this ball. Tony, they'll rotate it to safety, but they gotta play perfect. Halo and Frosty hit a shot. That they do, because all the United is going to do is try to get the slays and then bait the ball. Frosty ends up getting the double kill. That's going to allow Snakebite to hold on to their setup. But they need some spawners. They need to make something happen. Yep. Smarty McFly does end up falling on the death screen. Very good here for the boys in blue. A setup for Sentinels, the first we've seen and might be the last. Snakebite, he's got to play it <clears throat> or get near it. And I like this positioning, too. Can he get as close to the end of the line as he can? Can he pick up Ryan Newby? Cannot. Ryan Dude will be elusive. Snakebite still getting time. They're starting to close the distance on score as well. He'll toss it off the map. That's the best he could have hoped for, but now that they're down numbers, they got to find a way to get back to the ball. They're bleeding resources. Yeah, somebody has to be baiting the ten ball. Seconds. They don't have to go for it, but they just have to bait it. Now, with 10 seconds, you know what? They got to go for the ball right here, right now. Uh -oh. Rain uh -oh. advancing forward ends up getting the initial kill that they need. And round number one yeah. going to E. You knight it. And that's the tricky dilemma for Sentinels, right? If Snakebite holds that ball for too long and then dies, they're down resources to get back to it, back to center, and they didn't have time to get back to it as well. So Snakebite, maybe he would have had to play the ball earlier. Hard to say. Either way, first round done and dusted, and a temporary pause here as we wait to figure out where round two is. We got a couple replay. Oh, no, we don't. No, this is the round, I think. We We're go. jumping in. Okay. We're jumping right back in the action here. E United up one round. Sentinels have to put back to back rounds on the board if they want to take control of the series. Beautiful shots coming in out of rain. He definitely did not have the health advantage, but the shot really looking good. Sentinels, what can they do to answer the efficiency at E United here? Especially with rain taking trades here too. Sparty going to take one as well. Ball now up, rain with it with the heat wave and a setup about to form on A side. E United, it's back in their hands to open round two. United quickly getting into their eight side setup immediately as fast as possible. Sparty going to be the first one to go down. Ryan Noob holding down the back green side of things. Ends up getting the assist. Now working on to Lethal. Doesn't end Red up bar. trading kills, but even better gets the kill of his own. And three down goes Sensitive. So E United still holding on to that ball and putting some good points on the board. Viewers in the chat, in case you're unaware, the red bar is not a glitch. It's an actual mechanic in this game. If Royal Ryan Noob is enough, if, if he's up enough shots on that melee trade, the red bar will take place. And there's a bit more depth to it, but there is a reason behind the mystery there. And despite it, that 33 seconds on the board for E United off those plays.
And I saw on the kill for King Nick getting another remote detonation kill. The man's the king of shooting those freelance grenades. Royal 2 trying to bait the ball, puts down some shots, backs down, lets it collect a different angle. But it looks like there's a player contesting him over towards the green side. And of course, it's got to be Rain. It's got to be Rain. Rain is in a tricky position, and Sentinels are looking for their first opportunity to get to the ball. Frosty, that kill might help. Going to try to stay alive around the door here, stay alive in time for Camo. They can't quite seem to find a moment to get the ball. They need Slays to do it, and Nick going to knock him down. Trade's still coming in. Royal 2 does collect the ball. He'll get a second in a rotation. Where's the Camo, though? Okay, answer to the question. <laughs> camo flies in the hands of Snakebite, gonna slow things down completely, wants to make a play with it. Nobody of E-United pushing up just yet, but Rain on the nest side along with King Nick. It looks like Spartan might have gone for a bottom tower side flank, so watch out for that. Today's gonna come in, making Snakebite weak, goes in for the challenge onto King Nick, ends up going down. Frosty now getting some value here out of the heat wave, but he's gonna be taking some heavy damage as well. Frosty needs to make a play. He knows Ryan Noob's down below, but does not want to waste time with him. He'll try to bounce out. Thankfully, he's got Snake Bite for a little double team action here, but Ryan Noob, even smarter. Ryan Noob gets out of that. He rotates back to his team, and so does the ball. And that was set up for E United, but the snipe about to spawn. Frosty, if he can get to that snipe, maybe he can make a play here. Still a 10 kill advantage for E United. And they're going to wait this out. Frosty went for the flank instead. I like this. Rotation coming in out of E United. Sentinels trying to match that aggression. Coming in with the heat wave is Frosty. Ends up taking down one, but going down to one shot. Goes down for bottom mid to check onto Sparty, but World 2 making quick work okay. of him as Sentinels now rocking another oh. setup and Frosty already at the perimeter. You gotta love that curve slide out of Frosty. You see how quickly he rotated to get the angle on the ride, but he wasn't ready for it. Closes the distance on Nick, but Nick does get. Okay, he does die. Is that enough? They do manage to bring it to 41, and great play out of Lethal to drop the ball off the ledge, but ball now spawning out center in rain. Oh, about to no. Yeet Royal 2 off the map, or he'll take the kill with the BR. Either way, he's off the screen. I've never, I've seen people utilize the repulsor when somebody's at the same level with him, but he jumps up oh, and wow. actually gets that height over towards the bridge and almost sends him backing, gets the kill, but man, Rain yeah. out of control. You know, Ryan Newman said multiple times that he's one of the most underrated players Jeez. that we have in our tour, in, in our series, and we're seeing that right now. Rain making some oh. plays. They've been so objective efficient, so quick to get the ball, but maybe that ends here. Lethal snipe. Can he hit the shot? He's over his head. Where is this man going? Ryan Noob with the nerdy plays. He gets above him, takes the kill, but the snipe is in the hands of a camoed Frosty. He doesn't have many resources. What can he do? They do have the ball. That'll bring the enemies to him. Frosty needs an angle. Doesn't hit it. And he's actually out of ammo here, too, so Frosty got to play carefully. Out of sniper rifle, almost out of camo, and about to be out of time here is Sentinels as E United continuously putting some points on the board, but three down they go, and I don't think they played the ball off the map. Nope, Sentinels might be able to take advantage of these numbers. Why did that ball not go off the map, Alex? I'm not sure. Sentinels doing a pretty good job of just rotating and playing scrappy here, though. They do it at, do have it at B. You got Snake Bite there as well. Frosty, a line of coverage on the nest. Rain will put shots in. Ryan Duke, he's going in for a flank across center here. All three members of E United going to push up, but the ball now off the map, and whoever wins the, wins the traits will get back to the respawned ball first, and looks like E United might be doing that. There's still Royal 2 nearby, but E United, they might be in position to collect this ball off a of spawn. Royal 2, got to make sure it doesn't happen. United doing a fantastic job of shutting down Lethal in this round. Here's currently 3 and 11. E United getting really aggressive and really throwing off his time. And King Nick steals away the ball, but has to try to get the kill with the Heat Wave. Not able to do so. And oh, you do not want to give that to Frost. Don't give him no free Heat Waves. Definitely not. Especially when things are getting so scrappy at the end of the line here, Tony. 137 on the clock. Sentinels looking to take a round. Two dead on the feed. A hold for Sentinels in the back of A. A snipe about to spawn. A camo about to spawn. A lot in play here to control. And E United, if they get it, then they can swing things. Sentinels, if they defend it, they can win the round. Sentinels having to put back-to-back -back rounds in order to come out with this game here. Royal Dead. 2 gets an easy kill onto Spartan. Now we try to work onto King Nick. Beautiful double kill out of Royal 2. Welcome back, baby. Welcome back, Royal 2. Great to be on land and great to see Sentinels with a little momentum. That's 100 points. 
And a 1-1 in the score, and of course this is going to the third round in Oddball. I mean, of course it's going to game five Follow too, Tony. We're following the script. You're currently writing it, Tony. You're following your heart, right, with the script writing? <laughs> we'll We're see. Royal 2 last round, dropping 19 and 7. Wow. Doing a great job of keeping his team in it. And like I said, opening up all of those angles for his teammates. King Nick opening up a few angles as well, taking down the leading slayer, Royal 2, as two down go the boys in blue. United advantage off the opening, but Sentinel's quick to turn it. Nick has a heat wave, though, and that's all that's needed for a double. And all that's needed for a couple more kills, too, because he's got a snipe. Snakebite at least getting some ball time here, but Snakebite dead, he didn't play the ball. So E United, they can turn this into a setup, and Nick can start to take brains. Whenever you're controlling the B or the A side of the map, you have to control the sandbags, and that's exactly what King Nick was doing. But World 2, walking nice. over rent free oh. with the camouflage, Wait. throws an excellent nade, puts Wait. Brian down to one shot, ends up killing him before he's able to play it, and now starts oh. to work on King Nick, but the cleanup comes oh. in, and once again, E United having control. United so quick, so efficient. They don't let the ball get out of their hands. But they let the snipe get out of their hands. And they let it go into Frosty's. Every time Frosty has the snipe, he's only got one bullet, though. And that's the issue for Sentinels. The moment they get to these weapons, their their resources are limited. And they can't make big plays. Frosty, he needs this. He'll take it. That's too dead. Can they get to the ball, though? Was it played? So ball back out center. And once again, rinse and repeat. E United, they make they, they make things so difficult. I mean, yeah, they just went three down, and Sentinels weren't able to hop on that ball immediately, but finally, World 2 able to get it away. Meanwhile, oh. E United coming right off of spawn, slaying out, and, and like you said, making it as difficult yep. as possible. Frosty, uh -oh. the uh -oh. final player alive, he's going to go down. That's a squad wipe going in favor of E United, and look at that scoreboard. Yep. It ain't getting any pretty. Late game oddball for E United, and once again, they have control. Sentinels, they need an answer, and Tony, I want to hear the answer. Let's jump into a listen with the boys on Sentinels and see what they can do. Okay, guys, go straight to ball. Yeah. Right, Rain's weak, TJ, go, go, go. Cut him off, Cave. Yeah, one, cut him off, cut him off. Yeah. He's one shot going to B, absolute Rain. I got PJ. Okay, I'm going to be A flat, guys, two dead. I'll play, let's hop on ball. Let's Wait, try to kill C. Okay, okay. One screen door, Rhino, I got one, I got one. I got one. Dummy door, Dummy door, Yeah, I heard you, heard you, heard you. I'm beyond him, I'm beyond him, I got him. He's two dead. I'm bringing the C. Come to you, we're going to see. Guys, one tower, I got you, Tita. One's bottom mid rain. One's bottom mid rain. OS, on OS. On OS, keep right. Do it, rain one at Keter. And one's bottom mid. We're gonna get the guy. Nice, nice. Top mid, top mid, top mid. TJ, small door, small door, PJ. Two top mid, one top mid. I need help on us. Only top mid, Alright, Brad, you're right. I'm good, I'm good. Good time, Yeah, go, go, go. I got it, TJ. Okay, I have like two. Comms coming in out of Sentinels. You can tell that they can feel the pressure coming in, but I love what I'm hearing out of them. I mean, they're making sure that every call out is getting addressed, oh. and they're working it as Frosty taking down Spartan, yep. getting the kill, and now gonna start to advance forward. Another setup coming on the C side. King Nick having oh. no idea that Frosty there, My. so free shots coming in. Cheeky Die. angle finally able to take him down. Love that angle coming out of Bradley, but he is going to be cleaned up. Finally killed, though. I mean, you might have been listening to comms, Tony, but I was just mesmerized by Frosty's gameplay there. He found so many opportunities to survive and, and be a nuisance for his team. That collected 37 points with the ball as well, but Sparty got away with a snipe, and when he has snipe, the momentum of the game starts to turn. Lethal, watch your face. Nick will get the ball. They'll bring it back to Tower 63 now in Sparty, a line of defense. Spartan still having the sniper rifle in hands, probably the most important player in the game. No scope to the body, ends up taking down Snake by now going to advance forward. There's another one over uh -oh. to the bottom tower. The quick scope comes in, <laughs> body shots lethal, but that's not going to be enough to take him down. Rain going to fall in as well, and Sentinels having control. In a battle of attrition here, though, E United, they continue to pull away time 72 to 37. The camel might change things, but they need to win the slays to get to it. Snakebite gonna try his hand. He does put it on the body. Can he stay alive, though? Multiple looking. Nades coming in. Sparty wants it. Frosty there to defend, and Snakebite. Look at how elusive he is. Royal 2 takes the kill. Ball out center, too. Snakebite gonna take another. Almost hits the stick, but Rain's still dead. That's a double for him. Ball in their hands and a setup for Sentinels. 72 to 37 lead going in favor of E United. The team that takes this round will not only take the game, but control of this best of five yep. series. Snakebite knows that, wants to make something happen here. Alex, oh. 
what are we going to see? I like this. I think they're, are they trying to rotate the ball back to tower? Because Frosty's currently up in tower. I think he has the snipe too. They got all the resources right, so they're rotating the ball back to tower, back to high ground. Unfortunately, Frosty died, and now that he's dead, Lethal very quickly changes his mind. He's going to go back, and Snakebite going to play safely. No nade hit markers to expose him, so they don't know he's here. And Sparty, goodbye. But now that he's called it out, Snake by with a very quick curve slide to get right oh to rain. And you gotta love the use of the movement here to waste no time and stay in the fray. A squad wipe going in favor once again of Sentinels who quickly move into the A side setup. You have two players now rotating over towards the garage side as shots are starting to ring out. And what does Snake Bite do? Just rotate the ball. They're playing it beautifully. Sentinels starting to clutch up in the end of this game. They've now taken the lead at 77 and counting as they continue to rotate the ball away from E United. Frosty, he's been found, and Sparty takes him. Two dead, they take the ball with no play, so maybe E United can turn this back in their favor as well. I believe the Snipe's about to spawn here too. Sentinels, they gotta act quick. E United once again gonna take the lead here. Spartan oh, taking some damage it. onto the bridge side of the map. Ends up trading off for a Mangler, but goes down to one shot. Uh -oh. Somehow gets the melee kill onto Royal 2 right as the power-up oh, is wait. coming up. So easy camouflage grab for Spartan. So the ball ends up being played. Spartan okay. now has Mangler and camouflage. This is dangerous for Sentinels. It's definitely dangerous for Sentinels. Oh, it's dangerous now. Spartan just took the snipe. He's got the camo, he's got the mangler, they got 90 points on the board. Lethal with a trade. Royal 2 will pester Spartan and keep him back, but they gotta watch the ball as well. You can see Lethal's fighting for it. Bottom map, Spartan gonna take that time to, to bounce out. 95 and counting, he gets a kill under Royal 2. Ball still in their hands, they can't get to it. And E United, they lock the map down and lock down game three. Look at the excitement out of that young man, Spartan really going off in the comms. I can't even hear him, but I already know what he said. He said, let's go! He <laughs> starts to pound well, his teammates. I love the energy coming in out of Spartan. And on the other side, a lack of energy here on Sentinels, rightfully so. That was that that game was within striking just the Sentinels. And yeah. a couple mistakes go their way, and they come out on top. But now it's E United with a 2-1 lead. Definitely a rough exchange at the end, right? Because Sentinels, they had the advantage in those slays. They they killed more, they had numbers, but Spartan, despite it, managed to get camo, and thankfully for United, they managed to play the ball. And because of that, that had to bring them back to center map. And Spartan, he had the freedom on the map to use the camo to make a play. He snuck into center map, he got the kill into Frosty. The moment that happened, it was game over. So maybe Frosty would have had to play back on tower, play in a safer position, knowing the camo was not in their favor. Maybe Sentinels got confident because they had a numbers advantage. I don't know. I mean, it's not the moment to look back and recollect your thoughts because the series continues. That it does. And the United must be feeling good. They are one game away from advancing forward into the elimination finals. Sentinels have a bit of a mountain to climb, but if there's any team that knows about adver adversity and knows yeah. how to bounce back and, and almost click that mental reset button, it's Sentinels been there, done that. And I wouldn't be surprised if they send us to a game five. I called it earlier. I said, yeah. we go into a game five. So. I'm, I'm, I'm staying with it. I mean, I'd, I'd like, like to see it. We'll have to see, of course. Uh, Tony, I'm, I'm going to jump back to an old statistic. I, I don't fully know if this is correct, but I, I think since Royal 2 and Snake Bite started teaming together, how many times have they placed outside top three on a land? I think maybe once or maybe <laughs> never. Right? Maybe, I can't remember the statistic. Right, yeah. there's, a, there's a monstrous Definitely statistic. Definitely single digits. Yeah, single, yeah for, for Royal 2, and Snake Bite, since they started teaming together on land, they just they don't place outside top three. So if they lose this, you know, not only not only is it damaging for them to take a fourth place, but it's also for the damaging for the statistic, I guess, too. But what I'm trying to say is they tend to clutch up, Tony, yeah. and this is their opportunity to do it. Gotta protect the stats. <laughs> sure. I mean, with that long of a run, you gotta go. I mean, gotta protect I, them from you too. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, Royal Two, Snake Bite. Like I said, having a road to climb here. Yeah. It's going into Stronghold on Recharge. They want to tie things up. They want to force a game number five. We know how icy Sentinels can be. Mm -hmm. What are your keys to success here in game number four? I think the Shock Rifle really dictates the pace of this game. You got to get to that Shock. You got to make sure you're controlling it. It's the playmaking device on the map. If you got it, I mean, you can run the show. 
and you got to have it in Frosty or Royal Two's hands. On top of that, you want to see Lethal be elusive. There was a play in the end of that phase series where Falcate was trying to get a kill on the Lethal to get to the ball in the elevator. I don't know if you remember it, Tony, but Lethal was at a deficit. He's on the bottom of the elevator. Falcate is up on the top of the elevator above him with all the high ground, and Lethal does not go for the challenge. Instead, he repositions and stays alive, and because he milked his life, his team got to him in time to overwhelm Falcate and give themselves an opportunity to get the ball. So Lethal, if he can be that nuisance on the map, if he can take attention, then Frosty and, and Royal 2, they're going to have more opportunities to get kills with a shock. I'm going to agree with you. I, same thing. I, I want to make sure that Sentinels get the shock rifle in hands and get into the hands of a playmaker. Yeah. But for another reason, too, you can't put it in the hands of Spartan. Every time yep. Spartan has the shock rifle here on recharge, he goes. Uh, there was three times that he went on an eight kill spree or better with the shock rifle right here on this map. You got to make sure that he does not get the shock rifle in hands. And obviously, you know, when Frosty has it, he can make some plays. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Game number four, going on to recharge. And at this point, Sentinels fighting for their tournament lives. They would have to get this win to force a game number five. Meanwhile, E United want to put the nail in the coffin right here, right now. What's going to happen, Alex? Ain't that the question, Tony? This is it. This is the moment for both teams, and more so for Sentinels, because like you said, they are out of the tournament if they don't get their act together. Now, who else to start with but Sparty? And two quick slides for a rotation. Look at this. Where is he? He's already at the shock. <laughs> of course, Spartan the dog prioritizing the shock rifle, quickly getting it into hand. But now we're going to see if Sentinels can do better of shutting him down than other teams before them. Smarty immediately going to take away Bravo, so an early double cap going in favor of EU United, and now wow. we're seeing Spartan just perch up right towards top gold where he normally is. What a calculated opening strat at an EU United. Spartan, you know, you know Spartan's practiced that strat to shock, and you know his teammates knew exactly what to do to help him, and now it's up to Spartan to hold control here. Frosty World 2, they got two kills. Sparty got a strong side his way out of dodge here. 26 and counting, but numbers down, and Sentinels maybe a chance to act in a sword in his face. Now it's Frosty's turn. The shock rifle might be really good, but the sword, when it comes to close range, is always going to be king, and now we see Frosty oh. with both of them in hands, not able to get the kill. Ryanu quickly going yeah. to shut Look him down going for the remote detonation, but nobody home. But man, the sword oh, play coming out of snake bite ends up getting the double kill. Ryan who ends up going right back at him and earning himself that shock rifle. Despite E United getting obliterated there, Ryan Noob, he found an opportunity to break through and Ooh. stay alive. He'll take a perfect kill because of it. And now he is a hawk on the top of the map. You better watch out. Frosty now down as well. 32 for E United as their bodies are dropping. Finally, they deal with Ryan Noob, and maybe Snakebite can do something here. That boy be nerdy. You know, Ryan be Noob nerdy. do be nerdy. He nerdy <laughs> right there. Meanwhile, Snakebite oh, trying to bite back, sliding in towards Bravo, working his way in, and we're going to see another double cap this time going in favor of the boys in blue. And now, how will Sentinels fare with holding on to their setup as the spawners are quickly going to be funneled over towards the sea side of the map? Let's go, Batman right up into A, gets the reset on the cap in a position he needs. Sparty, he'll join him up top, but you might want to go back down. Snakebite here to guard the top of the map. Looks like Frosty has a kill. You can see Ryan Noob opposite side waiting for his moment, and that moment might be given to him if Rain makes a play. Rain having the camouflage, but the early shots is going to let Frosty know an idea of where he is. So I know that communication is coming in out of Sentinels. Rain going right up through the front door. Shots uh -oh. going on Snake by forced to back down over towards bottom mid. Somehow still alive. But here comes the nade. Oh. Ends up running out of camo and running out of time. He's going to hit the black screen. Yeah. Spartan now advancing forward here from Whirlpool. Despite the strong opening here at E United, Sentinels, they found their footing. They found control. They got A, B, and C locked down. And which do they elect to hold on to? Looks like Spawner split out into pipes. Spawner's split out the elevator as well. So interesting positioning here. Snakebite needs to find a flank, and he'll find it on the rain. Rain gonna come back for the fight, but Snakebite ready. Looks like E United will get into A to try to stop the bleeding, but Sentinel's just out rotating here to hold a point. They got the 129 off of this. Shrimp Cat was momentarily in favor of Sentinels, and they utilized that to get 129 to 32 lead. 
It looks like United are going to answer back by taking a double cap, also taking down Snakebite as well. Another one, Mangler on Mangler Crime, but the double uh -huh. kill going to be earned by young Ryan Noob. Ryan Noob staying alive or getting a trade there was massive for United because now Rainhouse A. They also have C. Frosty, the impact player, though. Can he knock down Rain? Rain going to try to stay up. Getting tagged from behind. World 2 does help. And now if he gets back to A, an AV hold would be optimal here for the team. Of course, there's the camo as well. And you can see Lethal's already in a fight, so Frosty instead. He's going to push up. World 2 takes A. You got to love the teamwork communication here as they hold control and positioning as well. Frosty, what can he do? Goes down to one shot, Frosty now advancing forward onto the Z side. The map goes right in onto Rain, gets the e early kill. So they're losing Bravo, but they're out rotating yep. the enemy team, working their way to Charlie. But with two players in front of him, Frosty, high IQ, backing down, prioritizing his life. There's no reason for him to die, nope. even though the return is going to go in favor of E United. Like you said, it's okay if they jump back for the reset. As long as they hold on to their numbers, they can get back to the hill immediately after. They now have AC yet again. Frosty just looking for a flank. And what beautiful awareness from him to spot it. Can he survive, though? Sparty won't let him. He'll take the kill. E United looking to bounce back here. But you can see, once again, Tony, we, we spoke about it, the out-rotation. I mean, as I say oh. it, it looks like Ryan Noob was ready. So BC hold. Spawners up, up in A side. And Ryan Noob with a shock yet again. So now rotated their way to the black screen, the Sentinels, uh -huh. as he united once again, getting a double cap. Ryan Noob with the shock rifle in hand, not connecting on the first one, but he has several shots more to go, and also having to grapple as well in case he puts himself in a non-advantageous position. Pay attention to the efficiency with Ryan Noob's reticle movement here, snapping onto important locations, and so aware of where to look to react quickly here. Snake bite will try to challenge him, and he still hits it. Can he stay alive? He has a grapple in the back pocket. If he needs to, he can rotate out here, but still wants the angle, still wants the pressure. And here's where he used the grapple. Quick rotation out to A, and now he's taking control of this side of the map. And A, B, hold. E United, they can turn things around with this. Ryan getting very aggressive here with the shock rifle, even taking a base with the normally you have a shock rifle player that plays back. Okay. But Ryan who playing forward and putting down the damage. Two members quickly go down here for E United, and Frosty looking to take advantage. Sentinels need to get back the A side of the map. Most powerful spot to have is an anchor point here. And if they can do that, they can get an AB hold. As I say it though, BC seems to be working out for them. United trying to find a point to pounce. Looks like Sparty does take that opening kill. Royal 2 can't quite get it. Frosty gets the trait. Royal 2 gonna continue to pester him as Lethal takes another. They're still finding time despite this though. 179, Lethal in position for camo. And if he grabs this, maybe they can make a play. Camouflage in the hands of Lethal down to one shot, but slaps it onto his chest like Iron Man and continues mm -hmm. to advance forward onto Long Haul. Gets himself. Does it at least not to go for the disruptor uh -oh. and uh -oh. ends up being taken down, melted yeah. onto the B side. But for Royal, excuse me, Royal 2 takes down one, works on the second one. Damage comes in. Players are going down here. Numbers back in favor of Sentinels. You can tell Lethal was not happy about that camo death. Despite it, looks like Sentinels ain't hurting too bad. They got BC, United spawning up over in Long Haul, and Royal 2 still hit perfect shots cross map. He'll jump back up to rejoin the fight here, but now he's got two to deal with. United, they're starting to put on the pressure here. A and C, they can hold this, especially if Ryan Noob stays alive. Tony, I've watched Ryan Noob's YouTube videos, and he is difficult to kill on Elevator. He plays to survive. Ryan Noob looking to survive here in this game. They want to put the nail on the coffin. Frosty trying to advance forward onto the seaside of the map, but he's going to be shut down. And so the snake by Rain going in for the challenge onto Lethal ends up getting the kill. And now another double cap going in favor of EU United, who are putting some good points on the board. They have caught up yep. two Sentinels. Not the most ideal setup to have, of course, by having this setup, spawners will be up in pipes and Sentinels will get access to Attic and a high point to control immediately. But as long as United play things carefully, they can continue to hold this and maybe flip the map. King Nick needs to live for that to happen though, and unfortunately he does die. Frosty takes one Ryan Noob with a trade. AC still held down. Lethal needs an impact, but he doesn't want to give up his life for it. 
Lethal staying alive over towards the B box. Camouflage finally coming up. He actually hesitates to go for it. Rain gonna take advantage of that momentary lapse of judgment. Two down goes Sentinels. Rain still alive, but Camouflage still up. And I know that he wants it here. Sparring working over towards Bravo. Rain finally able to get the camera, but has two players nice. coming out of long haul who shut him down immediately. Quick two-man rotation out of Sentinels. As they do it, though, they lose the plots. AB in control here for E United. Sentinels trapped in a corner because of it. You can see Frosty already moved up, though. He's in a sneaky spot. Frosty, because of his positioning, just got a kill into Sparty. He got dropped. But can Lethal make something off of the opportunity now given? He's up on Attic. Ryan Noob down below. He'll jump into C, or B. Maybe they can get a BC hold off of this, but Tony, we are going down to the wire with this one. Lethal gets the kill onto Ryan Noob, tries to get some shots onto Sparring across map, but not able to get the angle. Multiple players, one shot, are getting away alive. And looks like Lethal now wants to try to get closer to the gunfight. Ends up going in for the oh. challenge onto Nick, down to one shot. Lethal goes, somehow staying alive, puts the damage onto Ryan Noob. But man, Ryan who put oh. his 21st oh, no. kill on the board. E United, they broke in the 200 point mark here in the end zone. Sentinels need an answer. You got Royal 2 already up in A. Rain here to make things difficult. He gets the reset on the stronghold, and they now have points in their favor. 219 and counting. Rain locking it down from A. Snakebite in trouble. Where do they go? They got C. They got presence in B. And Rain, he is moving and grooving to get a flank. E United just had a trip cap, but somehow Sentinel sneak in and steal uh -oh. away two bases at the same Live time. Frosty. 220 to 201 going in favor of E United. King Nick sliding into the Bravo base, and it looks like they're able to steal away yet another one. Sentinels are on the ropes. King Nick's quick rotation here just tricked up the timing of Sentinels, and they were not ready for the flank. And because of it, now 230 and counting and resources in their favor. Sparty, look at this split spawns up in long haul, and Sparty down below. Royal 2 does not know what to do with this. That's 240. Final 10 seconds for this series. Sentinels, can they find an answer? Frosty gonna die to Spartan as well. They get into B. 246 here, they need to play perfect, and Nick not gonna let that happen. They'll die. And Tony, that's it for the series. E United, they find the win. They take top three and knock Sentinels out of the tournament. E United putting the nail in the coffin. Who knows what would have happened? If Sentinels came out with the win on that one and sent it to game five, but we don't have to worry about that. E United are going to the elimination finals. They are now one win away from making it back to the grand finals. Can they make back to back grand finals in back to back land tournaments? I mean, at this point, I think they can. I don't doubt it. E United just playing like a different beast on Sunday. They, they would not go down. So difficult to deal with, too. A lot of signs of life from Sentinels. Early game, they had control of that map. They had control of the points, too. E United, the moment they got their resources, I guess they regained, right? The camo in the end, that play at a Spartan. My god, I mean, you can't put him down. He, play, he milked that perfectly, right? Snuck out from under. The spawn was still open for Royal, too. He's got to push. Their options limited. Spartan played it beautifully. Just took their attention, got two kills. Wow. Yeah. Great win. For e United. Great win for United. Sentinels getting top four. I mean, it's not bad whatsoever. I know if you ask them, though, they're not going to be happy with that result. It's really championship. Is that twice or, in a row? That's it, top four twice now, right? It, it's really championship or bust with them. And even though uh, fully loaded, they weren't able to come out on top over E United. But you know what? Mm. It's the first land tournament we're seeing World 2. I'm yeah. sure he's going to grow. They're going to polish off and probably going to go back into Kansas City better than ever. Because, I mean, they do qualify for Kansas City off of these results. What are the stats well, definitely, telling you, Definitely they qualify, right? There's still plenty more to come up with this team, and I'm sure the sky's the limit for them. We've seen them dominate before. The stats, I mean, the one thing I noticed there, unfortunately, Frosty, right? I think he was 10 and 15 in that last game. Frosty, we know a high impact player for his team. He tends to be a playmaker. Couldn't make the plays this time around. That might be part of it. But I mean, all I think in part due to Spartan on the other side, making massive ones. And Ryan knew one of the most difficult kills, especially on recharge, I do, Based off of what I've seen, I, I, I kind of do think that Recharge might be one of the best maps for E United. They play it so sneaky, they're so careful, especially the angles they take to to get nade shots, right? Across the map, the, uh, what is it, the, the self-destruct, or not, uh, no, the uh, remote detonation is what it's called. Either way, hell of a series, hell of a series of plays for E United, and apparently we got an interview on the stage as well with Blaze. Feel free to take it away, man. They have earned it. Thank you very much, Shy. As I'm on the stage with Ryan Noob, and... 
Man, how you feeling coming off this victory, okay? Dude, I'm, I mean, good, but I mean, not good, but good, you know? Why are you not feeling good? It's dub. Dude, just recovered from COVID. I'm still, uh, like, still feeling a little uh, under the weather, but I mean, I, I, I'm good enough, you know? Yeah, now you are good enough, okay? And I ain't gonna lie, I was casting on the Xbox Play stream back there uh, with, with, with a kitten. <laughs> okay, oh. I need to use this mic because my mic is dead. All right. And so that's how this one works. Hey, Spartan, can you hold this for me, man? Thank you very much. All right. So as we're up here with Ryan Noob. And so now, Ryan, I know you're feeling, like you said, you was feeling sick because of COVID. I was asking him how he was doing. But, you know, I was in the back on the Xbox plays and you were making me a little sickly because I was watching what you were doing with that shock rifle and picking up multiple triples back there. And um, you have been playing phenomenal in this series. Now, E United, y'all make it back towards the losers finals. OK, trying to get back to the grand finals and get some revenge um, against Cloud9. How are you and the whole squad feeling after that victory? I mean, we're feeling good. Uh, we've recovered a lot from the first two days and have figured out our play style on how we want to win. Uh, we're just uh, shaping up, really. Yeah, you guys are shaping up, okay? You've been playing great throughout the day. What was the most difficult part of, uh, for you in that entire series playing against these guys? Because in map number one, it was super close where you guys, y'all get that victory in the OT because you were in the base. What was going through your mind there? Because you were by yourself and you were like, yo, ain't nothing's been working. Let me just pull it down towards Rockets. Yeah, so I think playing against them, I've talked about it for years now. They don't play the game the right way. Um, and I, I think it shows going into Halo. Like, they're great Halo players, don't get me wrong, and that's why they've won many tournaments. But they don't play the game the right way. And I think that they, I think, <laughs> I think that the, that game showed it. And uh, everything that we've ever practiced going into this tournament, we pulled off uh, being able to defend our base from, uh, you know, not letting them touch our flag. And they weren't coordinated enough to get a good pool going. And the one time that we got a good pool going, we ended up capping. Uh, again, I throw it's, it, it goes back to me throwing the flag up into our base on uh, into our teammate who's I told him to Spartan. yeah Spartan yeah layup, yeah man. he got the layup and uh, yeah it was because he was full shields you know it's something that we've been focusing on for a very long time is making sure that that guy stays full shield so they shoot the flag guy that's act that's throwing it up I die I take all the damage and he caps the flag I was watching and I was like that looks so coordinated but I'm happy to understand that it was coordinated because he was flying from top BR to meet you there and it worked out but the entire series was so close like that but it seems like when people play you guys longer y'all figure out ways how to over overcome them yeah it's like y'all y'all start just picking them apart is that true yeah, absolutely. I think the our biggest mistake, and I think what everyone else is really good at at this tournament is getting picks. And our biggest thing is if we don't get picked, we win the game. So we're trying to figure out how fast the other team is playing on each map and then play around that. Like, are, are they quickly, quick to the objective? Are they slow? And then we play based off that. Okay, okay. well, I'm going to let you get back with the boys and so you guys can start chopping up and getting ready for the losers finals because I know that's going to be a super important matchup for you because you want that revenge on Cloud9. Now, Lottie, that's going to do it for me and Ryan Noob on the stage. Break this series down with the guys. Thank you so much, Blaze, and thank you, Ryan, for that one. Such an impressive series from United, denying that Game 5 potential it could have been. Uh, I've got to say, just lights out gameplay from the United boys there, and Strongholds, I think, on Recharge really is a strength for them. What did you make of E United and the gameplay in the series? Uh, unbelievable gameplay all uh, series long, in all, in all honesty. I mean, they did such a good job of working together and denying a lot of the power-ups in the last two games specifically to keep themselves in the game, give themselves opportunity. And with that opportunity, they had a lot of success. They did indeed. And obviously this Strongholds game, Sentinels had quite a big lead at one point, but United were just able to kind of bounce back and work their way through the control of the power weapons and where they were situated throughout the map. Gaskin, what did you notice about this final game? I love that Strongholds is in the rotation because it is one of those games where you can have quite a significant lead, but it can be overturned by a team who knows how to take total control and knows how to flip those spawns and focus the spawns, be aggressive at the right times, but also know when to sit back and when to bait things out, like the camouflage, for example, which is something that United were doing so successfully. They weren't just jumping on it unnecessarily at times. They always made sure there was a game plan, and a lot of that comes down to the leadership and the ability this United uh, roster offers. And it was something that I saw on social media that Ryan Oop said. He says we should focus on the positives of Halo plays rather than the negatives, uh, more so the fact that in that 49-49 we saw against KCP when he got that final kill and we were kind of saying, you know, well, what's Struck doing? But he was like, let's talk about what we did to get that kill. EU United's decision making has been amazing in this tournament. Yeah, it really has. Focusing more on what Ryan Noob said in that interview, he said that these boys don't play the game the right way. And this is a comment he made in Halo 5 a couple of years ago. And at that point, Sentinel's boys were two-time world champions. And 
you have to say, he said back then, the reason why they won the games were not because they were playing the game right, it was just because individually they were so, so good. This game is more about teamwork now, so maybe that's why Sentinels are having these struggles. Yeah, I think the teamwork definitely needs to come together. I think the more reps that Sentinels get under their belt here on LAN and on online as an actual team will obviously do them justice. Uh, they're not going to be very happy with the result here. Yeah, no more reps this weekend for these yep. guys. Uh, they're sent home, and rightfully so, they did not play well enough to be the United. The United showing once again Second place might be in their destiny again. They might get back to a grand finals. And wouldn't that be a story for these guys? Guys that have had very inconsistent placings throughout their career from one event to another. For them to consistently be in that grand finals, that would be a big moment. But can they get the job done when they get there is a big question as well. That is the big question. Let's take a look at our bracket because they have Optic Gaming standing in their way, fellas. We obviously have our elimination bracket pretty much done and dusted apart from, as you can see right at the end there, the one that rebounds you back up into the grand final spot. So our elimination finals, Optic versus E United now. And on the other side of things, the winner's bracket, the winner of our elimination final will be meeting Cloud9 with a pretty decent record as well. They really haven't had, you know, much of a journey for them, honestly, in the past few months. They've had a pretty clean sweep through a winner's bracket. They don't know what it's like to be in the elimination bracket. And that's because it's pure greatness that comes out of these C9 boys. Yeah, they've found some consistency and greatness with that consistency, and they've continued to do it ever since. I mean, if we look back at the Splice roster in Halo 5 several times, did they have to go on a loser's bracket run in order to win tournaments? And they did that too. So. They've shown me, these group of players, they've shown me that they can do it all. It doesn't matter the bracket, doesn't matter where they are in the bracket. When it comes to play, when their backs are against the wall, Cloud Nine's at its best. The two teams that are left standing here, Gaskin, we got United and Optic obviously playing very shortly to see who will face Cloud Nine. Do you think either of these teams have what it takes to reset that bracket and win the grand finals? Ooh, spicy. I don't think they do. I think Cloud9 mm -hmm. in the moment are just too good. I'd love to say yes, and I'd love to believe, but I need to see something in this lower bracket from one of these teams. I need to see a demolishing. I need to see a 3-0 from one of them to then say, all right, okay, you've got it what it takes to go up against Cloud9. Realistically, Optic, after taking down United earlier in the winner's bracket, they're going to be the confident ones going into this series. They will want a stab at Cloud9. United, though, they did play them in Rally in that finals. There would have been a lot of VOD to go over, a lot of research they maybe could analyze here, and maybe they have a game plan because they've not faced Cloud9 yet in this tournament. They have not. They're going to need a one hell of a game plan, I think, going forward here into this grand finals, but they do have a hurdle in front of them yet. They have to win the elimination final. Well, I'll tell you what, though, just to cheer things up a bit, it's got a little bit intense on the desk here. Uh, I have a discount code for you guys at home, so listen up closely. We have a celebration happening. You get, guys get 15% off all of the gear in the HCS store. It's in the Xbox gear shop, and it's during this weekend, of course. And if you haven't had your hands on any of this yet, please use the code HCS. Yes, Anaheim 2022. You get 15% off. Head to that link right there. And you look pretty swaggy, just like Bravo, our friend right in the middle there as well. So uh, make sure you get your hands on all of that epic stuff. We are also doing a pretty big giveaway. If you haven't heard, I've been screaming it in this convention center for the past three days. It's been pretty so much. loud. It really has. I have been screaming uh, <laughs> from the top of my lungs. Yeah. We are doing an Xbox Series X giveaway. It is absolutely stunning. Of course, it is a Halo Infinite limited edition console. All you have to do to get your hands on this is follow at HCS on Twitter and retweet the official giveaway tweet while also tuning in and enjoying the show. We do have a grand final to get through, so I don't know why you wouldn't be tuning in. We need to find out exactly who's going to be lifting the trophy. But standing in the way of a trophy are three more teams. Now the two teams lined up after the break have an elimination final to get to. They don't want to go home. They want a chance at lifting that trophy. We'll be seeing who is going to go up against Cloud9 right after this break. <laughs> 